in the last lecture we learned about view child decorator and we learned that view child decorator allows us to get a reference to a dom element in the component class but with the view child decorator we can only get the reference of a single dom element at a time if multiple dom elements matches the selector of the view child then in that case the view child will only return the first element which matches the selector now in this lecture we are going to understand view children decorator so view children decorator is just like a view child decorator the view children decorator is also used to get a reference to a dom element but the view children decorator it returns a list of dom elements from the view template which matches the selector okay it will return all the matching elements so the difference between view child and view children decorator is that view child only returns the first occurrence of the dom element or a component or a directive which matches the selector but view children returns all the dom elements or the component or the directive which matches the selector let's try to understand view children decorator with an example for that i have created a brand new angular project and i'm calling it angular view children now in this project currently if i go to the source folder we have only one component which is this app component and if i open the html of this app component it looks something like this in there we have three input elements okay and we also have a button element here so we have three input elements and one button element and if i go to the web page this angular application looks something like this now what we will do is on each of these input elements i'll add a template reference variable and i'll simply call it input el you can name this variable anything but i'm going to call it input el and i'm going to use the same reference variable on all these three input elements and now our requirement is we want to get a reference to all these input elements in our component class in this case in app component class okay so in here let's go ahead and let's create a property and let's call it input elements and we know that this input element property it is going to store an html element so i'll set the type of this property as element ref and again in order to use this element ref we need to import it from angular slash go now i'm going to decorate this input element with at view child decorator so first let's see how the view child will work here and then we will see how the view children will work here and in order to use this view child we need to import it from angular slash co okay and here we need to specify the selector so the selector which i'm going to use here is this template reference variable name and here we have this error because we have not assigned this input element property with any value so what we are going to do is this property should be assigned by this view child decorator right so what i'm going to do is if i scroll down we have this tsconfig.json in there we will have all the compiler related configuration here and there if you notice this strict is set to true so what i'll do is for now i will simply set it to false okay and with that that error should be gone all right so this input elements it is going to store a reference to the input elements from the view template now on this button element let's go ahead and let's bind click event okay and in order to bind click event we need to wrap it within parenthesis like this and here let's call a method and let's call it maybe show let's go ahead and let's define this method in our component class so here i'll go ahead and i will create that method and inside this method what we will do is we will simply log this input elements property so if i say console.log and we want to log this input elements property and here in order to access this property we need to use this keyword so it should be this dot input element and from this input element we want to log the native element property okay with this let's go to the web page let me open developer console let's clear everything here and here when i click on this 
show full name button you see a single input element has been logged here and this single input element is basically this first input element with that template reference variable and that's what i mentioned before this view child it will return only a single element from the dom which matches the selector here with this selector we have three elements we have three input elements but the view child will return only the first element from the view template which matches the selector in this case the selector is this template reference variable but what we want is we want to get the reference of all these three input elements for that instead of using view child we can use view children and in order to use this view children we again need to import it from angular slash go and here we are passing the selector as input el we are calling the property as input elements now keep in mind that this view children it is not going to return a single element it is going to return a list of elements okay so it is going to return query list keep in mind the return type for this view children is query list and it is going to return a query list of element ref now in order to use this query list we again need to import it from angular slash co okay and here we will have an error because now this input element it is not storing an element ref it is storing a list of element ref so for now let me remove this console.log statement or maybe this property from the console.log statement all right so now inside this input elements property we are going to receive a list of references to dom elements okay so what we can do now is on that list so basically on this dot input elements we can use for each okay and we can loop over this input elements list and for each iteration what we are going to do is let's pass one callback function here and for each iteration we are going to receive that particular element and we are going to log them so i'll cut this console.log statement from here i'll paste it here and here let's say el which is going to store the input element for that particular iteration dot native element and this should be it so if i save the changes now if we go to the web page let me clear the console here and let me click on this show full name now you will notice that three input elements have been logged here for first name middle name and last name now instead of logging the inputs let's log the values which the user has typed inside those input elements so i'll go back and here i'll say dot value let's go back to the web page again let's type something here inside these text boxes so i'll type my name and if i click on this show full name you see it is first logging the value of the first input element then logging the value of the second input element and then logging the value of the third input element now our main requirement is when this show full name is clicked we want to display the full name of the user so let's go back here let's go ahead and let's create a property let's call it full name it is going to be of type string and initially let's assign it with empty string and then inside this show method let's go ahead and let's create a variable let's call it name and initially let's set it with empty string and here what we will do is instead of logging the value we will assign it to this name variable so here we will say name plus equals native element dot value now what we want is we also want to have some space between the first name and the middle name and we also want to have a space between the middle name and the last name so here let's also go ahead and let's append some space and finally after the iteration is over what we will do is on this name we will call trim so that it will trim any white space from beginning and end because after the third iteration this space will also get added after the last name right so we want to trim that space for that i'm using this trim and I am going to assign it to this full name property. So here I will say this dot full name 
equals the value stored in this name variable after trimming it. And finally, let's go ahead and let's display the value stored in this full name in the web page. So I'll go to this HTML file there. Let me go ahead and let me add an h3 element. And there I will display the full name. Okay, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let me close this developer console here and let's go ahead and let's add some value in these input elements. And when I click on the show full name, it should show the full name here. And if you see, the last space has also been trimmed here. So this is how we can use view children to get a reference to all the DOM elements with a matching selector. Now, one difference between view child and view children is that view child will return only the first DOM element which matches the selector. On the other hand, view children will return all the DOM elements which matches the selector. And the second difference is that view children is always resolved after the change detection is run. Okay, view children does not get resolved once the view is rendered. So for the view child, we learned that we have a second argument. So here also we have the second argument, but in this second argument, we can only specify the read property. Okay, we cannot specify the static property. In the view child, when we use static property, using the static property, we specify when do we want to resolve that property? Do we want to resolve that property when the view is rendered or we want to resolve that property when the change detection cycle runs? But here for the view children, we don't have that option. That's because here we cannot resolve the property decorated with view children when the view is initialized. The property decorated with view children that will only get initialized when the change detection cycle runs. And that's why here when this button will be clicked, a change detection cycle will run. And when that change detection cycle will run, then only this property will be initialized. If we try to write the same logic in ng on init, and we have learned in our last lecture that the ng on init is a lifecycle hook which gets called after all the properties of a component is initialized, right? So if we try to access this input element inside the ng on init, it will not work. Let me actually show you that. So let me write ng on init here. Okay, so we know that this ng on init will be called when all the properties of this app component will be initialized. That means when this property, this property and this property is initialized with its initial values. And in there, let me go ahead and let me write this logic. Okay, and here instead of name, I will simply say console.log. So this ng on init will be called when all these properties are initialized. So if this input element property is initialized, in that case, when this ng on init will run, it should log the value of each text boxes which we have in the web page. So if I go to the web page now, let me open developer console. You see, we already have an error. And the error says, cannot read property of undefined, reading for each. So basically here, we are trying to call this for each method on this input elements. But since it has not been initialized yet, it is undefined. And on that undefined, we are trying to access for each method. That's why we have this error. So you can see that that error is at line number 14 at this line. Okay, so we can say that this input elements, it has not been initialized yet. It will only get initialized when the change detection cycle runs. I hope this point is clear to you. So I'll remove this code from here. This was just to explain you this concept. All right, so this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.